Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live. This is season three, episode 10. Good evening, good evening, everybody. We got a couple of followers so far. Good evening, Johan, Alistair, Hannah, Rika, Jacques, Kuman, Peter, Niman, uh, Mohammed. Hi, good evening, guys. Welcome. Um, guys, straight off the bat, um, we're going to get into. Uh, we're going to talk about the bass season quickly. Our South African uh, a tournament bass season is drawing to an end. Uh, there's a couple of things left. There's the super final. Um, I know the guys are off to Interprovs at Wade as well. Maybe we'll get a chance to have a look at the Wade chart. We have dealt with Drick copies, so there's no need to, to have a look at Drick copies. Um, other big tournaments that have happened, we've had the FLW at Vitbank. It was a great success. Guys did very well there. Tough windy weird conditions all sorts of things all sorts of challenges but the guys did it some great results there um, a, a lot of great conclusions could could be made from what we saw actually happen there very very interesting stuff um, then of course we had uh, Albert Falls we well last month we spoke about the Albert Falls tournament the, the the big fish tournament which as you guys know is really just a big party it's such a wonderful tournament because anybody can win it from a little five-year-old girl to a to a person that's never fished in their lives before that's the beauty of a big fish tournament we've seen it happen in the past it'll happen again and it's just really nice it's an opportunity for everybody to get together have a really good party and hopefully bump into a good fish and that's essentially what that is it's bumping into a big fish um i don't think there's much more that you can uh, put into a tournament like that from a planning perspective so those tournaments just go out and and have an absolute blast however the guys that sacrifice business they sacrifice family and they put in whatnot um uh, these season things uh, the the Saba circuit the Joey circuit the FLW circuit man you guys I, I've said it before I take my hat off to you guys unbelievable how much effort and time and money you guys put into this absolutely fantastic wonderful wonderful to actually see people commit to a sport like what you guys do I take my hat off to you um, let me just have a quick look here. A whole lot of my other guys. Darren Hockley. Hi, good evening, Darren. How are you doing? Uh, Reynard's there. Hey, Harold. Uh, uh, Reynard. Michael Cannon. Battis is there. Hey, Michael. Yes, fish check dogs. Hey, I saw you and your dad did well, man. Fantastic. Those are some awesome fish. Looks like you guys had some fun. It's nice to actually do that. Eh? Um, Battis. Hi, good evening, Battis. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Um, you know, um, I think one of the biggest achievements in South Africa you might disagree with me guys fish different circuits whatnot but I believe that the Saba individual nationals to win that you are you are officially or, or to do well in that in, in fact just to get into that to be in the final which was held at Albert Falls Dam um, you you've proven to your teammates you've proven to your province that you're there to not only uh, stand for your province but you're there to stand for yourself as an individual and you've done extremely well and um, we obviously as fish tech we were super excited to see Martin de Kock take it um, man the guy we all know he's just an incredibly talented angler um, but let me not take anything away from the other guys that, that did extremely well the pro staff I mean the pro staff did so well Michael Cannon uh, um, Peter Esbach, uh, man, all of you, uh, Andrew, guys, you all did such a great job. Um, uh, Cornet and Jacques, Cor Cornet, I've, I've, I know you didn't get the result that you wanted, but hats off to you. You were there. You were in that top elite group. Uh, first time fishing on your own, on a foreign boat, whatnot. A lot of challenges for you. You got through it. You did it and you caught fish. Fantastic. Good job. Um, guys, the other thing is, um, you know, when I looked at the results coming through, man, I'm not saying the charts, you know, the guys won because they, they, they had the charts. I've said this so many times before, and I'm going to say it again. The, the charts, are, it's just one tool. You've got many tools. Your outboard motor is a tool. What happens if, if your outboard motor breaks? That's it. What happens if something on your boat breaks? What happens if your health, your health is a tool of sorts. 
uh, your state of mind. That's a tool, a very powerful tool. Um, your charts, your baits, your tackle, your gear. There are so many things that have to come together in like, let's call it a perfect storm to, to have a success in a tournament like that. And to see so many guys, well, let's just call it the majority, that had access to the charts, were actively using the charts. I know some of the guys that used them for the first time, it was a little bit of a mind blow for them. And they were like, oh man, we don't know what this is all about. We'll just wing it. Come the tournament, start to put a pattern together, go onto the charts, duplicate what they found, because the area dried out or whatever they went to another spot and boom did extremely well i'm not going to mention the names these are customers but you guys know who you are um i know a lot of guys say oh we don't use the charts and whatnot we don't worry don't ch chill so we know you're using the charts everybody knows um but really the guys that just put it together then what actually happened? Uh, let me just see who's there. Uh, Malcolm Katsia. Hello, Malcolm. How are you doing? Kornay's there. Hello, Kornay. I was just talking. I hope you heard what I said. Alton's joined. Hello, uh, 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 Alton. Um, uh, Malcolm. Hey, Uncle Martin de Kock. Um, yeah, cool, man. Okay. Um, right, guys. Um, pretty soon after Nationals. Hang on. Before I move away from that. I, I, I wasn't quite finished what I was saying there. To win nationals, I think it is such a massive, massive achievement considering the time and the, and the sacrifice and the effort that's been put in, in, into that. Unfortunately, you guys know me, I'm a bit of a doomsayer and you know, everyone says, ah, the drama and the whatnot. But guys, I just think it is just such a crying shame. That's such a wonderful, wonderful achievement sort of comes to the end of the tournament and is it's it's like it never really existed there's this there's nothing on tv you don't see anything in the newspapers you'll see a little bit here and there on facebook or something i just think it is such a crying shame yes they're going to put in the magazines and whatnot guys the magazine days are finished make it People want to see live. People want to see information now. If it happened yesterday, not really that interested. People want to know what's happened now. That's the beauty of the world that we live in with social media. And I'm really hoping and praying that the, the bass fishing sport becomes a live thing in that people can actually see what's going on. And when that announcement is made and everything is done you know the guys think that just the people that are there are only are the only people they need to advertise to and promote certain brands mercury lawrence uh whatever some sliding tracks or something and some computers and whatnot you know they think that's a no this there's the the, the potential for this to be so much bigger is out there and geez i tell you what we need to embrace today we really need to embrace it and make a big thing of the guys that do well in this tournament. Really and truly, we need to make a big thing of it because it is that big a deal. It's a, it's a massive achievement. But anyway, let's give the guys the, the, the benefit of the doubt that hopefully, while I'm still alive, they pull it off and turn it into something what it should be. But we'll, we will see. And people say, yeah, but it's expensive and it's this and that. I tell you what, you look after the pennies, the pounds will look after themselves. Put a nice pl a game plan together. You'll see how fast those sponsors come and you will make the money to pay for, for this thing. Some guys say, yeah, but it needs to be such an expensive thing. Let me tell you, with a little cell phone, a drone and a tablet and some airtime, you can do some amazing stuff. Let me tell you amazing stuff if you want to complicate it and turn it into a production company with charges hundreds of thousands of rands of course you can go down that road but you don't need to you don't need to you don't need to pay those people that amount of money this can be done in a very very simple much cheaper and effective way will it be at the same level of professionalism as what you see on our american uh, stream shows and whatnot no it won't be the same level but you've got to start somewhere we've got to start somewhere i mean if you take somebody with their phone at the tournament that's busy filming something live it's such, so awesome to actually see that and that's somebody on a low resolution live stream imagine if we just had a hd stream it's not that expensive it's not that expensive 
it's, it's very affordable. Stream it, there's drones, there's all sorts of things. You can make it really, really fun. Make it a very huge success. Uh, Reynard says, agree. Uh, Growing with you should be on East Coast, East Coast Road and use 24. Yes, quite right, Reynard. I think it should be a, a, a huge thing, huge coverage. Uh, Alistair says the awesome part of the charts is to make sports available to everyone. The guys that did well nationals due to pure talent as everyone had the information available to them using the charts well the talents on their own. Yes, Alistair, I think you've pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Um, the the charts are the fish tech charts are so commonplace now. So many guys have them that it yes, it is. The old days, you, you, you had a certain select few that had some really key information, what lay underneath the water, and they had a huge advantage when it came to the tournament, okay? Then along come uh, fish tech charts. Now everybody can get it, but not everybody was really into the charts, not really quite, you know, knew what it was about. So, you oh, know, we don't need it. We'll, we'll be fine. That has changed. I can tell you that has changed. If you look at our numbers and um, um, a number of charts that we've sold, it's, it's, it's really, I can tell you now, the majority at least are using um, the, the charts. So yes, their pure fishing skills are really coming through now. And that is awesome to actually see. Right. Guys, I said to you, go and have a look. Jeez, it's already 11 minutes past. I said to Martin that I would be done. <laughs> but I'd be talking about this by now, and it's already 10 minutes past. Sorry, Martin, if you're watching. Um, right, Martin gave us a fantastic video. I put it up on Facebook uh, uh, earlier today, uh, showing you the video. Uh, Martin actually showed us one of his prime spots that he was fishing on Albert Falls in the final. And I tell you what... There's nobody I know that's going to give you that type of in information. But I will tell you something about Martin de Kock, though. He will tell you a whole lot of stories and he'll give you a lot of information. Eh? And let me tell you, you've got to listen so carefully to what Martin tells you. Because everything he's telling you is extremely valuable. Extremely invaluable information. But here's the sad part. Only a small handful of people will actually listen to what he's saying. They'll try and check, hey, I know that spot, I know that spot. They'll pull in there, boy, and they will throw that whole 21-foot skeeter worth of baits at that spot. And, oh, nothing. Because they didn't listen like a, to what Martin was actually saying. So anyway, um, I'm not going to play the actual video. We don't have time for that. But let's have a look at the spot that Martin was, was talking about. I want to zoom into it here. I have asked for Martin's permission for this. So those of you who are out on your phones and WhatsApping, he's telling everybody your spot. <laughs> Relax. Relax. I've asked for permission for this. Hi, boy. Hi. Some people's children. I'm guys. Anyway, this is the spot that Martin was, was talking about. Now, guys, this area here, um, obviously, it's a very popular area. Um, th this is the, the satellite view. This is just north of what's the sort of last sort of end of the old rice paddies on my charts, what's called the rice paddy. Um, before we had satellite imagery like this, let me take you back to the old straight contour chart so you can familiarize your, yourself. That's the sort of area that Martin's talking about here. When the dam is 100% full, that area there is 33, 34, it's nearly 35 feet deep. Unfortunately, during nationals, the water was down a lot. Just before nationals, myself and my autonomous craft, Amy, did a lot of scanning in the area here, and we redid a contour chart. At 48%, <coughs> excuse me, guys, my throat is really playing up so you're gonna to have to excuse me some water there um this is at 11 feet and i think by the time nationals came it, i think it dropped another three feet from this i'm, I'm open to correction i don't know if somebody um has if, if somebody has more uh, uh accurate information please please let me know but from this chart the contour 48 percent i called it contour 48 percent because that's the percentage it was when i re-recorded this whole area you can see i did a lot that was three days work and one of those days was one hell of a storm um and very much thanks to amy my autonomous craft 
before to do a third of this took me six years i think it was but anyway um so yeah this spot here um you can see there is some interesting stuff there there's a point there there's a little bit of a dip there it looks like there's a bit of a secondary point but martin was using the aerial hd chart okay let's go back here and what martin said that he'd marked here was this spot here he said guys there's some timber here this aerial hd if you compare it to the satellite can you see that's the satellite and this is on z level uh zoom level 21 by the way nobody can get better resolution than this on uh, google earth at least for um albert falls dam and as you can see from that very very difficult to actually see what is going on there but martin was clever and he knew that i'd been over that area with the drone i remember the one day he was there when i was there with the drone and that's the, the type of quality that we've got there now guys you will remember martin said there was a point there was this primary point here you can see the point there then it came to a bit of an inlet here and then it was the secondary point there where he found these the I'm not saying it was his only spot, but like his video, he said this was a very this was one of his primary spots. So a lot of people would have identified this this primary point here. But let's be honest, how many would have identified that secondary point over there, which Martin was actually talking about? I don't think many would have. I really don't. And I agree with Martin. Not many people would have cottoned onto that. But what made it special? Let's zoom right in. What can we see there? Oh no. Guys, my apology. I've just had Colleen come in. <laughs> Apologies, everybody. Oh my goodness, I forgot to change the screen. Hey, you guys must think, hey, what is going on with this? Oh, yeah. My goodness. Anyway, thank you, Colleen. <laughs> Jeez, you guys have missed all of that. Yo, yo. Anyway, um, <laughs> let me just recap on that quickly. Sorry, man. My goodness, you guys haven't seen any of that. Um, I was I was talking about this area here. This is the satellite chart, this area that, that Martin fishes. There it is there. If you zoom in, this was his primary, this was a very popular spot of his. That's the sort of quality that you can expect from um, the satellite imagery at zoom level 21, which is the highest that you can use. Jeez, guys, I apologize. Jeez, all that yakking and you weren't seeing anything. Yo, you guys must stop me when you see me going on like that. I just hope this thing is still updating. I don't know. I don't know if somebody can post a comment or something just to make sure that it's working. But anyway, okay. So, um, Martin knew, okay, the satellite imagery is nice. You know, you, you, you look at it from there and you think, yo, look how fantastic this is. And a lot of people do have access to this. And there's lots of ways on the internet to make it. And it's free. And you use the IMC. You go to China Mall and you buy a little disc for 50 bucks. You don't have to go to Hummingbird and buy a, a blank card for 1,800 Rand. I call it Baba. You go down to China Mall. You buy a card for 50 bucks. And then you can make yourself a lovely card like this. That's all on the internet there. Old Mr. Alan Baker put a wonderful video out there. Go and look for it. He calls himself the Hummingbird Guru. And go and have a look there. And he will tell you exactly how to make a chart like this. Thank you so much, Alan Baker. That was wonderful of you. You helped us a lot there. So then you can make yourself a nice chart like this. But Martin knew that the quality here wasn't sufficient. It wasn't quite good enough. Okay. So Aerial HD, this was, now this is obviously done with my drone. I put a drone up there. I worked out how to do a little bit of mapping with the drone. And as you can see, there's some interesting information there. But guys, if you go and look at Martin's video and you listen carefully, he talks about this is a primary point, which you can see there, the contours show it, that it's a primary point. There you're 33, you're 34. You can see that going out there. Then he spoke about the secondary point over there, okay? He said that was a key area for him. Now, if you think about it, eh, 
these things here these are birds here at the time which a lot of people would obviously recognize as birds i just don't know if this is actually updating guys i'm going to restart my my facebook feed because i can't see anybody and i don't know if anybody's still there or sorry guys just give me a second remember these live things oh, oh. let's see right there we go we can see it now there we go okay now the guys can see okay awesome fantastic the guys can see what what we're talking about <sighs> sorry about that okay so this secondary point is is what martin was talking about and and he said he got some good fish here this was one of his primary spots what made the spot so obvious let me tell you what might have happened with a lot of people that, that didn't know the dam and that bought these these charts what do you think they might have identified in this area here i can tell you now that there if i bought the charts and me personally with what i know now I would hit that spot i would mark that with a waypoint because that has just got too much too much interesting stuff on it is it birds what's going on there how do you the problem when you look at something from the top is you're not 100 percent sure what it is but this is the beauty of the fish tech charts we've got hundreds and hundreds of these photos so let's have a look what this photo looks like what is it ah there it is can you see that now you know exactly I can tell you now i think this was very shallow very very shallow in in the tournament uh, obviously this was taken when it was a lot lower than what it was at, at, at the tournament and before things got very grown over um, but this is something that i think would have been highlighted by a lot of people but that's not what martin was was fishing he wasn't mar fishing that very obvious thing there this is what he was fishing now let's break it down what did martin let's just first see quickly would we have picked this up with our sa inland chart let's say those who went and bought the sa inland chart no you definitely would not have identified anything there what if you had the sediment and you digitized it and you put it onto your lawrence it says it's in the middle of a plantation there's nothing there that really is going to make you say that's a spot mark it we're going there because there's lots of plantation around this area so go back to our satellite is there anything there that really highlighted that particular spot just below it yes it did but that spot there that martin was talking about no not at all aerial hd does show us something's going on there something interesting is going on there but now this is what martin said he said he then took hang on let's just work out how deep this was if this was 48 percent, that's nine that's 10 feet let's say it was down by three feet this was only in about seven feet of water this was very very shallow during the tournament because remember this is your 48 percent okay but let's go back to uh, our aerial hd then martin said what he did was he scanned he used his lorens and he put his side scan and he went and scanned around this area and he found the weed edges guys this area has been severely overgrown with weeds so when i got in here with the drone i was very very fortunate but this area here now was completely overgrown even if the water was crystal crystal clear you wouldn't have it you know it identified what was under the weeds here or in between the weeds you see these little clumpy things here um I, unfortunately i don't have a photograph of that which is such a pity um but anyway but you, you, it looks like there's something there but it's extremely subtle and this is the point that i'm trying to make and martin was trying to make too it was very very subtle uh, michael says six feet okay um was it six feet down or is this area was this area in six feet mark i'm gonna presume six feet down okay so so this was very very shallow but let's have a look remember i went in there with amy and we didn't just go and do contour charts no 
with my we did side scan of everything that was called mosaic 2019 it didn't qualify for the ultra hf i couldn't call it ultra hf because we had to use a slightly lower frequency the water quality was absolutely shocking and for this area we ended up with that just grass everywhere but guys martin was actually 100 percent correct that area there if you look here look what's happening here this inlet here can you see this inlet here this is like a patch where there isn't that much grass now this spot where martin was was fishing look how the grass has actually got an edge to it let me put the cursor out of the way can you see like it's like a a blank spot it's probably like a soft mushy bottom where nothing really grew for whatever reason and then you can see that weed line around it and i don't you know what i don't think martin had the this update i'll have to confirm with him but he basically did this these scans himself and determined this grassy edge and guys well we can see how it how it turned out it it worked for him it really did you can see there's other spots that have got a very similar type of situation where there's no grass and then you've got these grass edges now quite a few guys th there's a beautiful example of what i'm talking about can you see here where my cursor is now that's blank there's there's no weed and grass and whatnot growing there but next to it there's your grass line so where do you want to be you want to put your boat slap bang in that channel and work these edges of this grass here i'm sure that would have been another valuable tool if it was deep enough there it was six foot there geez, that would be very very shallow but anyway you 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 get the idea of what i was saying so so basically learn to use all the tools in in the chart go and look at as much as possible and like martin says don't forget about those fine fine little things that actually look like nothing like like that there very very valuable going forward for everybody right um michael cannon says oh at that area it, it was six foot in that particular area okay well you see uh the, the uh, uh mark i'm sure you will confirm uh, during the tour well, i wasn't there during the tournament i was there beforehand and the water quality was really poor um i don't know what it was like or what the clarity was like but sure if it was anything like when i was there i think i could see about 20 centimeters into the water and that was it so six foot is a very very targetable depth i'm sure michael and martin will will, will agree with me there but anyway guys where are we sitting we are gee half an hour gone already um guys i have asked martin um if uh, you know if any of you do have any questions to please ask if you any if you want to ask him anything about this uh even when i'm going on to my next segment now um uh, please drop a, a, a message in there whatnot if you feel we need to give martin a call we can give him a call but i think we've sort of missed that boat i said to him i'll only call you in the first 15 minutes and it's already half uh, half past but anyway um just leave a a message there um right guys let's look at i want to now what happened after that uh let's put this into here then i'm going to put that uh, sorry guys i'm just trying to find there it is okay um recently um look the carp guys you guys know uh you've been using fish finders for a very very long time for many many years and very very popular fish finders have been things like the garmin 140 the garmin 120 the garmin 160 even if you're really splashing out um it, it was the norm the guys just wanted to know how deep it was out there very very basic stuff and um you you good to go things have changed the technology that's out there today you can learn so much about the water around you and I got invited to the ProLogic uh, carp, uh, carp Specimen Clinic at Inanda Dam. 
let me put this up here let me merge that into there and then that photo is going to keep going so i need to sorry guys i will find it see how it just runs away from me there let me go back there okay right um this was the actual day um man listening to how far carp fishing has has come i met uh, peter Niman um about it was 2013 it was in 2013 i was playing around with a tro with a um, remote electric trolling motor with spot lock on a kick boat on Inanda, and I was scanning the area just off the uh, 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 campsite area with the boat, and I was streaming that via Wi-Fi to a tablet uh, on on the shore. And that's when I met Peter Niman, who is a very keen and a very well-known uh, carp specimen uh, uh, fisherman. And I showed him what I was doing, and he was very interested in what I was doing. But I think I was getting a little bit. Uh, uh, you know getting a little bit over the top like i normally do with with electronics but i tell you what him I've, I've i've watched peter and leslie that you see in the picture behind me here and their friends and joe purin and these guys the way they use marine electronics is changing and it's changing fast you will see there's a time to use your electronics and there's a time not to use your your electronics People say, said to me, I put this thing on this picture on Facebook and they said, yeah, the guy's got his sun cover on. He's not using it. Let me tell you, Leslie was, was done with his fish finder by that stage. He didn't need his fish finder. He knew exactly where he was going. He had his uh, marker on his feed spot. He knew exactly what was there. He knew exactly what the bottom construction was. He knew everything about that area. These guys have worked out the, how to use the fish finder as a planning tool, make charts, find out what's the bottom construction like. There's so much information already available out there and take that and use it. Now, this doesn't mean that nobody must use the likes of the Hook 2 4X or the Striker DV4 or whatnot. Everybody's got to start somewhere. So for the first guy who's taking up the sport for the first time and wants a fish finder and he goes into the uh, 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 tackle shop and says, listen, I want to buy some carp gear and I'll buy a little boat and a little trolling motor and a fish finder. That is the place to go. Get a little hook 4X and whatnot. However, if you're a semi-guru, a guy that knows what you're doing, that's been doing this for a long time, The hook to 4X is not is not the right thing. Yes, if you've got major budget constraints, 100%, then I do understand it. But with the technology, especially now with active imaging, you'll see the guys now that are buying the hook uh, 2 uh, units. This has got active imaging 3-in-1. The side scan resolution. Let me play this video. Let me just play these photos for you in the background here while I'm talking. There we go. Uh, you'll see some screenshots of the carp coming up just now and what have you. And guys, you won't believe how much information you can pick up for an area like this. So when you're sitting on the shore and you're setting up your camp and you're putting out your swim, your, your where your lines are going to go out and all this type of thing, you want to know exactly what type of, not just the depth, you want to know exactly what construction that bottom is. And I can tell you, guys have read the books and read the manual. The hard bottom on your 2D sonar is a thick bottom, and then a soft bottom is a thin bottom. I've written two self-published books on, on the subject, and I can tell you now, if you're not comparing one area to another area, it's impossible because your unit is doing an auto correction all the time. One minute it's thick, one minute it's thin, and that's just because your sensitivity has been changed, not because the bottom changed. However, when you're going past a large area like this and you're using a tool like Structure Map that is built into the unit, you can build these charts yourself 
on the unit you just drive through that area and let me tell you not only will you identify those humps and bumps but you'll also identify how hard they are so you can really gauge where you want to place your uh, feed or your baits or whatever so um, and this for me is also I, you know I want to spend more time with these guys and and learn more about about the carp fishing and learn more about what they need from the the electronics but I can tell you now these guys like Peter Nimon, Leslie, Joe Purin, there's our Joe, Joe now um, man these guys are learning fast and I look forward to learning from them what they've learned and how they've learned how to apply their their electronics um, this, these photos that you see behind here behind me here was a really fun day it was a family event everybody was there the guys were camping the weather was just absolutely phenomenal um the, the guys from prologic were, were there johan this is johan now showing the guys a couple of tricks there was a guy there from the uk dick he was fantastic there's old dick now he was uh, he had some great videos i took some videos of him he had some great information teaching the guys some skills and some tricks and what have you man it was really a great day I, I really look forward to 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 seeing something like this whoa i just want to show you that that there wait look at this here this is a screenshot that uh, peter Niemann took um of 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 some carp and i mean look how easy it is to identify these the these carp using this technology i mean there's, there's Peter now, got a beautiful fish there. There's Leslie. Um, okay, this was, I don't think this was then. This was another day. But hang on, I just want to show you that as well. This is a very important picture here. Guys, with carp, they are so easy to identify. Can you see these massive shadows that they leave here? I don't know if you can see that on, on the screen. On the side scan, I'm looking at the green side scan here. Um, this here, I'm just looking at the quality here. I doubt this is the new uh, TI2. I think this is with total scan uh, with the older uh, uh, TI. Um, yes, this is the older TI, 100%. Um, with the new active imaging 3-in-1, these images that you see here that are in green will be much sharper and much clearer. The, the resolution on that TI2 on the active imaging is truly, truly amazing. And I mean, look at these beautiful fish um, that these guys are getting. And it's, a, it's just fantastic to see how that sport is developing. Now, I'm not talking just about the electronics dis, uh, perspective, but everything about it, the lines they use, the reels they use, the tools they use, it, just everything about the sport. It really is fantastic to see how how it has advanced from a technology perspective um peter says yes that was from the old ti yeah i i, I thought as much um so guys i you know I'm, I'm i'm hoping to talk to more people from around the country that are looking at upgrading from their hook twos and want to use start using really good electronics guys anything from the ti even the last range the old ti version brilliant unit remember the elite ti and the elite ti2 is effectively an hds just the hds has got a glass screen and it has got a plastic screen and some other small uh, little features here and there but predominantly how it works the basic unit and what it's going to give you they're they're the same unit just at a much better cost so you know definitely give the guys a shout i know with the carp guys if you get all of peter Niman, um we, we're doing a very very good special uh on on these units unbelievable special so and that's only to the end of of the month so if you really if you want to get a ti or a or even a live unit you know um you got a little bit of extra time lying around you want a glass screen by all means give us a shout we'll give you a really really fantastic price on on that and yeah I, i'm just so excited about seeing the carp guys just upping their, their their game from an electronics perspective it's really exciting to actually see um right that's the carp side of things uh, i think that's just playing through again um before i go how are we doing no we still got good good time left what i want to do is guys there's let me merge that into there 
I can't believe I started that talk about the chart and you guys couldn't even see what I was doing there. That was so unfortunate. I just need to change these charts here. Guys, um, Riggles Wade, the best guys. Uh, there's Interprovs at Riggles Wade, which I said at the beginning of, of the show. Um, man, I believe it's low. Now, this chart I haven't even looked at. So we're going to be looking at it together. Um on Riggles Wade. Um, I hope, I don't think there's anybody here from the Eastern Cape that's going to really know. Let me see, it's not reading the card on that slot. Let's see if it reads it on that one. There we go. Um, I don't know at what percentage that dam is. I just know that it is very, very low. So let's see if I can find it here quickly. Let's go to Navionics. We're going to zoom out here. Oh, yeah. You see, now I'm doing it again. You can't see what I'm doing, eh? Boom. Okay. There we go. Let's find. Let's make our way down to East London, Stutterheim. options back okay let's go sediment let's see what have we got here right let's look at this point do you know what i should have done for this it, it's it's obviously too late now um um johan says um it's down to 48%. Wow. Johan, uh, about 40. Yes, Alton says. Yeah, Alton's here. Of course, Alton's here. Oh, fantastic. Alton, thanks. Okay, so it's 47% it's and it's 22 feet down. Okay, so where is our shoreline here? Let's go to contours. There it is there. Okay. Wow, that's a long way out. 22 feet all the way out there. Do we even have mosaic for that? Categories. Put that on there. Photo overlay onto full. Yo, it is very, very limited. My goodness. This is going to be very tough, guys. Sure. Let's go. Let's put. Uh, chart options, categories. Let's put some lines on there. No, there we go. No, if it's down, uh, what did they say? It's down 22 feet. No, so there's still some very usable areas here. Let's have a look at some of these photographs here. Again, we've got a lot of photographs here. Guys, unfortunately, all these photographs, every single one of these photographs is going to be high and dry. So there's going to be no benefit to the photographs whatsoever. Um, so the side scan mosaic is going to be your number one tool for, for the dam. And unfortunately, it's not nearly, it's not nearly as good as you know this was one of our very first dams which we did uh, a, a mosaic on way in the early days this is a three meter mosaic there's the one meter mosaic um chart options photo overlay full back categories turn the categories off phew yeah mosaic one meter Oh, no. Do you know what that was? That was the photographs. I went around the shoreline taking photographs when it was at one meter and when it was at three meters. So obviously none of that is going to be of, of, of any value. Even the aerial HD, again, it's, it's not, not any of the aerial HD is going to come in, into play because of because 
because of the dam just being too low. You see there, it's just going to be too low. So guys, unfortunately, with regard to this, you're going to have to use your sediment. Try and get some information off your sediment charts and your mosaic, the side scan mosaic. When the rains do return, um, we will go back and we will rescan the whole dam. In fact, um, I had a very, very interesting week, uh, well, three days this last week at Midmar Dam. It was a self training exercise, um, giving Amy trying to find out the best way to not just scan a dam like a machine but to add that human element certain things that i do when i'm on the water and i'm collecting data there's a couple of tricks and whatnot that i've learned over the years it's uh, what i call the, the 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 human element behind it i never thought i'd ever be able to incorporate that into a machine however the tools out there are available and just using a little bit of common sense and a lot of work um i've managed to uh, bring that human element into my programming of of Amy and I tell you what the, the Midmar chart is going to be the first fully fully autonomous chart of a dam lake reservoir whatever um, am I safe in saying in the world is this a world first that we're doing uh, I can't say, I can't prove that. I can't say if that is, is the case. But I can tell you now, from a South African perspective, and probably the world, uh, Midmar will be that first chart. And I tell you what, if you see the quality, particularly of the side scan mosaic, it is just mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very exciting. It makes the um, Albert Falls chart that I first did with Autonomous, uh, you know, just before Nationals, makes that look like Mickey Mouse. Okay, look, the water conditions also weren't that 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 great then. So anyway, um, so unfortunately, guys, um, yeah, the the Riggles Way chart, you're going to have to work your way through it. It's not anything too too fantastic, but I hope you guys do manage to put a plan plan together. So um, yeah, and uh, the guys that are fishing the super final at uh, the um, Anglers for Anglers, um, the super final is at Dricopies. Um, guys, that is a brilliant brilliant chart. We've sold a bunch of those charts. Uh, don't be the only guy that goes there that doesn't have it and everybody around you has got it. That'll just be sad. But um, yeah, that's, that's going to be a good one. And that's coming up now, soon. Um, uh, what, what are the dates on the Super Final? I can't remember. It's just around the corner. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I have done a full video. Uh, in fact, I did one evening just on, on, on Dree Copies or most of the evening was on Dree Copies. Go and have a look at my, at my YouTube channel. Click below, sub subscribe down there somewhere when this I always load my videos onto YouTube. So so just go through my seasons. Uh, it will be season three. It'll probably be episode seven or eight or nine, somewhere seven, I think. Episode seven. Anyway, don't don't quote me on it. But um, go and have a look at that and uh, give Colleen a buzz and get your Dree Copies chart. It is a fantastic chart. It's got everything. That aerial HD stuff that I did with the drone, I, I did a lot of drone stuff. In amongst that weed there in the water, fantastic information. And I see the water hasn't dropped too much. It's come down a little bit, but not much. So that's going to be truly fantastic um, uh, a, a data there. Jacques says the Super Vinyl is the 8th, 9th November. Sure just around the corner eh? so it's exactly a month's time thanks Jacques so yeah guys best of luck um let me put this on to here we are finishing early for the first time it's 10 2 that's fantastic anyway guys um I'm not gonna blah 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 just to make it up to an hour I think I've done enough blah 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 um but please if you got any questions 
please go and have another look at Martin de Kock's video that he put up on Facebook where, where he was talking about that spot and listen very, very carefully to, to, to what he says. Some really good in, information there. Uh, as far as the carp guys go, I'm going to try and get some information every month for the carp guys. Uh, we might start with the carp guys. We might start with some uh, trick uh, um, uh, setups and techniques and things. Things that we dealt with the bass guys. It was done. It was dusted. Everybody that was that sort of been following this sort of knew how to get the unit set up and whatnot. From the carp in in the carp aspect of the show, which I'm going to try and do every single month, we're going to deal with uh, questions that the carp guys have have got. And we'll we'll go along from there. So even the bass guys, the newish bass guys that maybe are a little bit not too confident with their electronics, stick around for the carp show. And who knows, you might learn a couple of little tricks while the carp guys are, are learning. I'm going to be learning from the carp guys. We're going to be learning together. Any one of you got an idea for us or anything you want to see on the show where you need a help with, with a little bit of help with with something that'll be awesome and guys please um you want some information some really first-hand information from a really fantastic guy please on facebook get hold of peter neman what a wonderful man he will help you with all sorts of things really really nice guy um uh, uh peter put there thanks man john no fantastic peter we we really um I'm, I'm, I'm going to be hounding you and Leslie and Joe for information all the time. So, yeah, no, good on. I look forward to, to, to all of that. So, guys, uh, thanks for sticking it out with the show. I will be uploading this to YouTube uh, in full HD. I don't know how good the quality was tonight on the live stream, but the uh, YouTube video will be a full 108 uh, HD. So, uh, guys, have a fantastic uh, month. Uh, best of luck to the guys going to the states these guys going to the states now um uh, michael cannon i think is going martin uh yeah there's the, 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 a good couple of guys um best of luck to all of you and um yeah let's let's i'll be following you and take lots of photos put them on facebook and let, let's talk about that a bit next month at fish tech live that'll be episode 11 sure that'll be november the, the year's nearly done can you believe it three years of 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 doing this Guys, thanks very much. And if Kone is still there, guys and girl, uh, thanks for, for watching. And we'll see you next month.